What's up guys, my name is Yuris and welcome to another video here on my YouTube channel. Uh, in this video we are talking about this 180 centimeters aquarium right behind me. Uh, by the time of recording it's the next day, the aquarium has been escaped. It's a little bit cloudy, uh, but nonetheless I would like to take you through the entire creation process of this aquarium, show you the hardware that I have used to build this aquarium, the hardscape materials, all the plans, the techniques I have used, uh, literally talk you through the entire process and hopefully uh, provide you some guidance and help and insights so you can uh, yeah maybe create something similar or get inspired to create something of your own so let's get started Starting first, I would like to talk about the hardware used to build this aquarium. We have over here a 180 by 60 by 60 centimeters aquarium, commonly referred as a 180p. Um, this aquarium has been built by the German company Amel. Uh, I trust Amel and get my custom-made tanks for them uh, for many years. Fun fact, Amel has been building aquariums for Aqua Designer Mano in the past. The aquarium is lit by Aqua Designer Mano solar RGB, three of them, and I think they make a beautiful light. Uh, the whole system is filtered by two external canister filters, both Oazo Biomaster Thermo 600, and I have pimped the filtration medium with the Seachem Purigan and Seachem Matrix just to give it some better biological filtration as well as some uh, chemical absorption for the early stage to help you know, just bring the tank in balance. As for CO2 injection, I'm using a GBL pressurized system with pH control. Uh, so a pH probe is sitting in the aquarium measuring the pH uh, in the water and by telling the system what the pH is, the system can adjust the right amount of CO2 to keep the CO2 level consistent. I really like using uh, these uh, CO2 systems. Uh, they just make it super easy to set up the CO2 level to 20 to 30 milligrams per liter and basically forget about it. You just have to swap the bottles and to recalibrate the pH probe once in a while. Further, we're using two Twinster Nano Plus devices on this aquarium. Uh, the Twinster is uh, something you don't really need to have a successful aquarium, but if you can afford it, uh, if you have the possibility to use it, it comes with uh, a lot of benefits to the system. Uh, it not only reduces the amount of spores and uh, bacteria and germs, uh, all kind of things in water, uh, just improves the water clarity as well, uh, but it also enriches the water with oxygen which is beneficial for all the living beings uh, in the aquarium but also for the filter bacteria so higher oxygen levels are always welcome uh, so we're running two of these uh, devices on this aquarium uh, for the filtration also we have swapped the regular uh, pipe work for a set of uh, glass lily pipes from aqua rebel Let's continue with the substrate system that we have in here, which is based of, uh, let's say, three ingredients. Uh, number one is the ADA PowerSense Special L, because that's a very big aquarium. Uh, this is going to improve the long-term health of the aquarium, providing a lot of nutrients in the substrate, as well as perfect growing environment uh, for the living bacteria in the substrate. The PowerSense Special has been topped with Tropica plant soil, the first layer, and on top of that first layer, uh, we have sprinkled uh, some Tropica nutrition capsules. Those nutrition capsules contain uh, macro and micronutrients. Uh, they cannot be released to the water, and for that reason, there is no risk of overdosing. Uh, this way, we just ensure that there is plenty of nutrients inside the substrate for quick term, long term, and yeah, it just makes the entire system better for the plants. The water used in this aquarium is, of course, as you know me, reverse osmosis water. Uh, to filter this water, we have a really big RO unit uh, in the room behind the aquarium, and we have a big barrel where the water is prepared, and afterwards uh, it is pumped uh, through a tubing uh, into the aquarium. And like mentioned earlier, the water is then set to uh, ideal conditions with uh, GBL minerals in this case. I'm always aiming for a value of 
key age of two or three around that and the G age around five. Uh, so these are my perfect ideal values for plant growth as well as uh, you know all kind of fish and shrimps which prefer uh, soft water. At the same time with key age two or three you have enough uh, puffer capacity uh, for the injected uh, CO2 to keep the pH level stable. Now guys, we have talked about the hardware and of course you cannot wait uh, to see how this everything has been set up. Uh, so to set up this aquarium, first things first, I laid out all the driftwood, which is by the way the ancient juniper wood on the floor to get a bird's eye view on all the pieces and to yeah, select which pieces I want to use. Uh, the general idea for the layout was a classic Ryoboku style triangular layout, uh, one you can see many from Takashi Amano in one of his books. And uh, yeah, that's what I went for and I selected the right pieces, starting with the biggest one. I placed it at about one third from the left side at the golden rule ratio, secured it with a stone uh, just to get, you know, like a rough mock-up how it could look like. And from there on, I puzzled my way through the layout, adding more and more pieces, completing and balancing the layout. Once the driftwood pieces have been in place, I took a couple pictures as a little visual guidance for rebuilding it. Then all the driftwood pieces have been removed from the aquarium and I added the substrate, which I already explained previously. Once the substrate layer was in, I started adding the driftwood back into the aquarium and securing it with final pieces of uh, rocks uh, to stabilize them and also arranged sort of a divider between the front ground and the background to create a really large slope of soil in the back and also of course to secure the driftwood and just to make the whole layout visually appealing. And guys, pay attention that I kept the background free of any branches. The reason for that is branches pointing towards and really getting close to the back wall of your aquarium are taking away depth from your aquarium. They make it look flat and also they simply disturb the flow in the background and it will also disturb the growth of your stem plants. Uh, they will be always in the way when trimming them. So whenever possible, try to keep the background clean and free. Uh, so you have the space for the planting, for the trimming, for the flow and use the hardscape in the middle section and try to lean it a little bit uh, towards the front glass. This way you create depth because you create sort of a shadow area underneath the hardscape. And as we learned from aquascaping legends like Josh Sim and Fukada-san in the Green Aqua videos, yeah, you have to have light and shadow uh, both in your aquarium and uh, you get shadow if you lean your hardscape towards the front glass. So that's some pro tips here for you guys. Uh, once the hardscape was in place, next step I have secured it and by securing I mean I have used zip ties whenever I needed to connect two pieces of driftwood with each other and I've also used my uh, cotton pad and super glue technique to glue things in place uh, so that rocks don't shift and the driftwood doesn't shift because uh, well, you never know in inclined projects like this, I like to uh, go the safe route and just in general lately I like to glue all my hardscape in place. Uh, this way things just stay more stable in the long term. To do so is very simple. Uh, you can check out my pro tip video on this topic, but basically what I did, I used a tiny little piece of a cotton pad, I squeezed it with tweezers just in between two rocks or in between a rock and, and driftwood or in between two pieces of driftwood, you name it, and just uh, then, uh, yeah, uh, topped it with liquid super glue. And that's important, you are using a cyano acrylate based uh, super glue uh, product here and uh, the brand doesn't matter. If you want to know which one I use, check out the links down below. By the way, uh, everything or most of the things used in this product uh, project, you will find links down in the description below. So once the hardscape was fixed with the glue, I have also added a couple rocks uh, to the back of the driftwood just to make it a little bit more heavier to prevent things from floating up because what you don't want is to scape a large aquarium like this, plant it, do all the job, fill it up, and then have floating driftwood. That would be a complete nightmare. So always make sure the wood is stable and in place. And if you are not sure, just put a couple extra rocks on top of the wood. You can always remove those afterwards. 
to next step, uh, we have prepared the plants and uh, yeah, preparation is king. So, you know, you're always quicker when you batch prepare all your plants. What I basically did uh, with the help of the teacher who was uh, supporting me uh, on this project and basically organizing and managing everything here. Uh, so we cleaned all the plants, removed the rock wool, uh, brushed it away from the roots, um, create little, I don't know, baskets uh, with all the plants for the foreground, for the midground, and then the background. Uh, we have used a lot of crypts um, in the midground. So let me talk you briefly through the plants we have used in this layout. Uh, if we take a look from the side on the aquarium, we see clearly uh, that it is divided in three sections, the foreground, the midground, and the background. And as you can see, guys, I have a very, very large background because this is where a lot of stuff is going to happen in this aquarium. The entire background is going to be planted or now is already planted with stem plants. And when they grow up, uh, the bigger the background section for the stem plants is, the better it looks like. So I have sort of a tiny foreground, just enough to showcase some carpeting plants and some tiny uh, <laughs> mid-ground planting with the crypts. Uh, basically like a transition from the foreground to the mid-ground. Uh, so try to skip the foreground as quickly as possible to get to the mid-ground. This is where you get height and you build depth for your aquarium, for the perspective uh, and for the aesthetics. Uh, then I have a very strong, bold mid-ground. This is where the entire hardscape is sitting. Again, this side perspective, if you look at it, it looks like everything is aligned on one line from you know the side panels of the glass like everything is like sitting on one string and then you have this wide background so first of all i have planted the crypts uh, i started with the cryptocorini vanity eye green and i planted this crypt basically like behind the rocks in the deepest kind of positions gaps uh, between the rocks sort of in the shadowy areas underneath uh, the driftwood because you want a light green color to be in that shadow area. This way you brighten up uh, the shadow area a little bit uh, because if you use something like Cryptocurani Patchy Eye, which turns really brown in a dark spot, it looks almost black and you have, you know, you don't really see the plant. So I use the Wendy Ti Green in the darker spots all the way around the rocks and then, yeah, sort of surrounded the Wendy Ti Green with the Cryptocurani uh, Patchy Eye. It is a very small and compact crypt, uh, which you can keep even smaller if you trim off the leaves, but in this case, I haven't done that. Uh, you know, I like to chop off all the crypt leaves. Uh, check out my pro tip on this one. But in this case, the plants came very small and compact from Tropica, by the way, shout out to Tropica for always providing super high quality plants. I kept the leaves, so that's why it's not uh, as naked as, as many of my scapes look like right after planting. And then I use a third uh, variety of crypts. This is the Cryptocorani Albida Brown, probably the smallest in the group. Just a tiny, lovely crypt for a transition to the foreground planting. So once the foreground and the midground consisting of the crypt uh, was in place, I have planted uh, some accent uh, midground plants, which in this case were Hygrophila araguaya or Hygrophila lancea. Uh, Araguaya. Uh, this is a nice reddish uh, stem plant that you can create nice bushes in the yeah in the, in the, in the midground of your aquarium. I really like this plant. So we have two spots: one somewhere here around the you know one third from the left side, and another group on the right side. So uh, yeah. Again, one small group, one larger group, kind of balancing out the layout here. And in the background, behind the crypt, uh, you know, somewhere there on the left side, behind the Wendy Ti Green, uh, I planted some uh, Bluxa Japonica, and I did the same on the right side, uh, again, behind the Wendy Ti Green to create a smooth transition from the foreground, over the crypts, over the Bluxa, to the background planting. That kind of wraps up that section. And as for the background, I have used my bamboo sticks to kind of divide the background in a, yeah, an odd number of sections and then uh, created like triangular shaped uh, planting areas. The reason why I use triangular shaped uh, planting areas is because the triangular lines are longer. Uh, this way the aquarium looks deeper. This is again a little pro tip, a little trick here to make your aquarium deeper and look uh, bigger. So plant your 
plants not in squares, planted in triangles. I did use the uh, Rotala species green on the very left and on the very right because it's a very compact growing uh, Rotala species and you can keep it quite shallow, so basically shaping uh, towards the other stem plants. And then I transitioned to the mid-ground uh, over a variety of stem plants. Uh, so I go just basically from left to right. Uh, Rotala green, Marophyllum matogrossense, Rotala rotundifolia, Hygrophila costata, Ludwigia palustris, Hygrophila pinatifida, then again Hygrophila costata. So we keep the Hygrophila costata, which will grow really strong and bold somewhere around this area. Again, make some groups, align them around the, you know, one-third uh, lines. Then we have again uh, some Rotala rotundifolia. Then we have uh, a group of Hygrophila siamensis 53b. Uh, then again Ludwigia palustris. Then again Hygrophila pinatifida. Then another group of Hygrophila siamensis 53b. Rotala rotundifolia, Myrophila matogrossense, and Rotala green. So uh, that kind of wraps up and uh, sums up the background planting. So I don't know how many fields they were. If you go above 10, then the odd number doesn't play any role. Uh, if it's below that, it's same with fish numbers. Um, if you are below 10, uh, try to stick to an odd number. If you go above 10, uh, the number doesn't play a role anymore. So the foreground planting is made of uh, Lealopsis brasiliensis. It's a very nice, grassy uh, carpeting plant. Uh, pretty slow growing, and this is the reason why we have used this plant in here, because it is a huge tank, it is a deep tank, 60 centimeter deep, and you don't want to trim a Glossostigma carpet every week in this aquarium because, well, <laughs> life is short. <laughs> um, just to uh, bring a little bit of a uh, alternation in the leaf pattern of the Elopsis brasiliensis, we have used Marsilia hizuta in the foreground. Uh, and this is it, just those two carpeting plants. Uh, a sweet mix, love using both of them. And yeah, uh, during the process, we already started pre-filling the aquarium with uh, water. So basically when we planted the foreground, the water level was around the soil level. And you know guys, I usually plant into dry soil. And I have to say, I prefer that definitely over planting into wet soil. The reason is uh, you need the water level always sort of slightly above the soil level for perfect planting you know, uh, conditions. And this is really difficult uh, to achieve in a larger tank if you have a larger slope. Uh, so for me, it is a lot easier to plant everything dry, just prevent plants from drying out by spraying them occasionally with water, uh, instead of every time adjusting the water level as you go up. Because as soon as you have somewhere uh, the water a few centimeters above, uh, the soil and you are planting something very small, it becomes tricky, the plant can float up. If the water level is below the soil, you plant something, the soil is sticky and the, the planting hole is not closing by itself. So yeah, whenever possible I try to plant into dry soil and not fill up with water. Anyway, uh, by the time we finished the background planting, it was also reason of time. We have filled the entire aquarium with reverse osmosis water. We had only prepared around about 250-300 liters. Uh, this one here measures, I think, 650. If I take away the soil, we have roughly 500-550 liters of water that had to go inside. And, you know, even we have a boosted RO system, it will still take a couple hours to fill up the aquarium. Uh, so right about that time the tank was almost half filled with water and uh, yeah, then I started adding the epiphytes. As for the epiphytes, we have used Bucifalandra species red and I used the Bucifalandra species red all the way around the mid-ground, mostly at the lower sections in between the rocks, somewhere in between the rocks and driftwood. Then we have used uh, a very small Anubia species, Anubias uh, nana petite bonsai uh, from uh, yeah, uh, tissue culture cups. So they even they look even smaller uh, at that point. And yeah, finally uh, we have added the Bolbitis hydolotti, which uh, arrived as uh, aqua decor from Tropica. And to create a nice looking Bulbitis, very compact and healthy growing, I trim down all the leaves. And if you do so, try to trim the leaves as close to the right zone as possible. And then I lifted up the plant from the bockwood 
And the nice thing about the uh, Bulbitis reed song, when you cut off all the leaves, you have this, I don't know, it looks like a branchy thing, like a little octopus with all the tentacles going and which are flexible. You can squeeze it in so many gaps and it will just hold it by itself in all kinds of gaps. So I have used the Bulbitis Hodiolotti all the way around, sort of on top of the rocks, in between rocks and driftwood on the entire line. So we will have bulbitis leaves sticking out uh, everywhere. And uh, yeah, this is it for the plants in the aquarium. And finally, uh, we have some um, Phyllanthus fluitans as a floating plant, which hasn't been added yet because uh, there have been a lot of floating particles and we haven't had a fishing net when we set up the aquarium yesterday. I forgot, we also added the minerals uh, to the water, which always looks a little uh, funny. Uh, you pour in this milky looking uh, liquid uh, after you dissolve the powder in a little bit of the water and um, yeah, turns out everything like whitish in the aquarium uh, but it's very important to restore the proper mineral levels. We have also added some live bacteria from uh, Arca microbe lift and some more from GBL. So yeah that hopefully uh, is going to help to kickstart the biological filtration in this setup and there you have it a 180 centimeters display aquarium uh, in this uh, location here which is by the way uh, a school in uh, Germany in Bavaria so I wish there will be more schools in the world that have aquariums like this to help the, the students and the children to teach them biology and chemistry and uh, you know, science in general. So the name of the school is Maximilian von Montkeles uh, Gymnasium, but I will drop a link down below uh, so you can check out the school. Uh, if you're from area here, you're from Germany, you want to send your kids to the school uh, just because of the aquarium, who knows? <laughs> so shout out uh, to the teacher, uh, Alexander, who has invited me for, the, uh, for this project and the school who has made it all possible. Um, I hope you enjoyed this project. I will try to come back in the future or to spice up the video with some footage provided by Alexander once the aquarium has matured and yeah. If you like this video, show me with a thumbs up, drop a comment down below. Uh, let me know if this uh, style of videos filmed uh, this way is uh, something um, you like, if it's worth uh, doing, continue doing it. Um, have a wonderful day guys, stay safe and uh, hopefully see you next time.